Good evening all. Hope y'all's having a good day. Here is the code that I wrote to test the Schlatter SWEP05 operator panel using my universal I.O. board. Now, to begin with, the very first thing that we must do is tell the compiler what processor we're using. So we type in this command processor and then 16F877A. Then we use hashtag include and the less than and greater than symbols and inside those two symbols we type P 16F877A dot include. Now the registers, let's go down here and look at one of the registers. Here is one of the registers, port A. Now port A has a physical address within that microcontroller. And instead of writing out that physical address, we can name it port A. And that, up here in the include file, port A's address is defined. Now it's a lot easier to type out port A than it is to remember each address for all of these registers. <laughs> it's nice to have this include file right here. Makes uh, makes programming just a little bit easier. Here we go with the configuration file. Now I always set up my configuration file as 10111100000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 for the PIC 16F877A. This command right here, config, and here we have a little b, which means that the value here inside the starting single quote and the ending single quote will be binary. So we have underscore underscore config binary and within these single quotes the values that we want to enter into that configuration file. Now this is, let me uh, free up my hands here. This is very important. It's underscore, underscore, config, and then the value. So it's a little bit hard to see unless you separate those two underscores with the space bar. Underscore, underscore, config, and then your ones and zeros. Let's go over these values. This first bit right here, when you set it to one, this is the uh, flash program memory code protection bit. When it's set to one, code protection is off. When it's set to zero, code protection is enabled. That's very important. You set this bit right here to zero if you don't want anybody running off with your code that you work so hard to create. <laughs> so, if I were to take this microcontroller and put it on a programmer and the code protection is enabled by setting this bit to zero, nobody would be able to pull that code out. That code, when you looked at it, after you have downloaded it with a, uh, a programmer, 
all you would see was ones. You wouldn't see the ones and zeros that make up the actual code. So nobody would be able to use your code if this bit is set to zero. This next bit is not used. Now here, a bit 11 is used for the in-circuit debugger. And if you set that bit to 1, it's disabled so that port B bit 6 and port B bit 7 are set to general purpose I.O. And that's what we want. So we set that bit to 1. Here, write protection is off on bits 10 and 9 if we set these two bits to 1. All program memory may be written to by EECON control. I always set those two bits to 1. The next bit, bit 8, this is data EEPROM memory code protection bit. And I set that to 1 so that it's disabled. If I want it enabled, I'd set that bit to 0. Here on bit 7, we have the low voltage in circuit programmer disabled. I'm not using that. And so that port B bit 3 is used as general purpose I.O. by setting that bit to 0. Brownout reset disabled. Set this bit to 0. Bit 5 and 4 not used. They're unimplemented. Power up timer enable bit. Set that to zero to enable that. Watchdog, watchdog timer disabled. Set that bit to zero. I'm not using the watchdog timer. Now here we have two bits that determine what type of clock or oscillator is used and the frequency. I set these two bits to 0 and 1 for a 4 megahertz clock. You can also set those two bits to 1 and 0 for a 20 megahertz clock. In our case, I'm using a 4 megahertz clock. So, I set those two bits right there to 0 and 1. According to the data sheet, you can use many types of uh, clock sources. You can use a resistor capacitor oscillator um, and whatnot. But uh, if you need to use an RC oscillator for a certain type of frequency, go to the data sheet and you can see which ones you can select. Now that we have performed those functions, let's go down and we'll initialize the equates. We do that with the hashtag define function. What this function does, hashtag define, it allows you to name a port uh, pin. So in our case, we're using port D bit 0 as the start switch input. And we do that with this define function right here. We could, if we wanted to, we could just say, um, uh, for instance, let's go look at port D bit 0, but it's so much 
easier in the code to say, oh, that's the start switch. <laughs> you see? So that's what this function right here, hashtag define does. Hashtag define start switch, start underscore switch is looking at port D bit zero, whether it's high or low. Now let's look at the C block and C function. What this allows us to do is define where our variables reside. And we have six right here, digit address, input data, write address, J, K, L. When we use this function, the variable digit underscore address will reside at SRAM location 20 hex. This value right here, 0, little x, 20, means hexadecimal, 20. Input underscore data will reside in the following address, so hexadecimal 21. Write underscore address will reside at hexadecimal 20, 21, and 22. J, K, and L will reside at hex 23, hex 24, and hex 25. That's a very convenient way of setting up your variable. Now, origin 0, 0, 0, 0 hex, this is where when we compile that code, it will start at address 0. That's very important. You have to have that in your code to tell the compiler where inside that microcontroller your code starts. Now we're going to initialize the ports for input and output, initialize the PIC 16F8777 A. <laughs> Here we go. We want to select the bank. There's multiple banks inside this microcontroller and each bank has a register, has registers associated with those banks. The port A, B, C, D, and E, they're in bank zero. Now, just a short while back, you could select which bank you were in with this uh, command right here. This is bit clear file, status, the status register, RP1, bit clear file, status, RP0, and that would select bank 0, but I got those remarked out. They're not being used. And I'm using this command down here, bank select, port A. Bank select will set us into the bank 0 register or port A, B, C, D, and E re, re, uh, reside. We want to, before we initialize the ports to input and output, we set all those ports to zero with clear file port A, clear file port B, clear file port C, clear file port D, and clear file port E.
Now, we're going to switch to bank one. This is where the TRIS A, TRIS B, TRIS C, TRIS D, and TRIS E registers reside. Those registers tell the microcontroller whether we are input and output, input and output, input and output for each of these five ports. So we bank select TRIS A. Now we're going to initialize port I.O. On port A we have an AD control 1 register. We have to set if we're going to use that port as general purpose digital input output we have to move the literal value of hexadecimal 6 to the working register and then move the working register to the file AD control 1 ADCON1 now the microprocessor will know that port A is going to be used as general purpose input output and not A to D control analog to digital here we are going to set port A for all outputs so we move the literal value of 00, zero hex to the working register and then move the working register to the file TRIS A TRIS A is the direction register Now, this very input data bit 0, 1, 2, and 3 are on these four bits of port A. The decimal point is on this output right here. We're not using this bit and up here these two bits are not available they're not used port A is one two three four five six bits wide that's port A we're done with port A initializing port A up here port B we're setting the eight bits of port B for output now we're not using these bits right here. We're only using these three bits for the digit address 0, 1, and 2. So we move the literal value of hexadecimal 00, zero to the working register and then we move the working register to the file TRIS B and that sets port B for all outputs. Again, the same thing for port C. We're setting port C for all outputs. These four bits right here are for the right address. 0, 1, 2, and 3. They select which ICM 7218C is selected by the MC74HC154N. We move the literal value of hexadecimal zero to the working register and then we move the working register to the file TRIS C. All zeros sets port C for outputs. These bits up here are not used. Only these four down here are being used in our application. 
port D, here we got a change up. All of these bits, all seven bits here, are not being used. Bit zero is set to one. That's our start switch input. When we set in the Tris D register, when we set this to a one, that indicates that that bit is an input, not an output. Zeros in the Tris register are outputs, and one in the Tris register are inputs. And on port D, bit zero is the input for our start switch. So we move the literal hexadecimal one to the working register, and we move the working register to the Tris D file. And that sets up bit zero as an input. Port E. <laughs> We're only using bit zero as the input enable to the MC74HC154N. So these are all output. There's only three pins used on port E. These other are not available. We move the literal hexadecimal value 00, zero to the working register and we move the working register to the file Tris E. Now we got to get back to bank zero. So we bank select with this command port A. Now we are at bank zero. Bank zero being where? Port A, port B, port C, port D, and port E reside. Now that we are back to bank zero with bank select port A, we want to set the digit address, input data, and write address to their initial values of zero. So we clear file digit underscore address, clear file input underscore data, clear file write underscore address. And our three variables used in this program are set to zero. Now, down here, we want to set port A, the input data port, port B, the digit address port, and port C, the write address port of the microcontrollers interfaced to that operator panel. We want to set those to zero. So we move the literal value of hexadecimal zero, zero, little x, zero, zero, to the working register, and we move that working register to these three files. Move working register file to port A, move working register to file port B, move working register file to port C. Then we have to set the enable input to the MC74HC154N high, logic high. So we move the literal value 
of hexadecimal one, that's bit zero, set high to the working register, and we move the working register to the file port E. That sets the enable input, the input enable to the 74HC154N high. After we initialize the variables and the ports, we stop down here at this point right here. We have start underscore pause on the start switch input. Let's go back up here. The start switch input is on port D bit zero. We come down here. The start underscore pause. This is a label. And we have that start switch input. If it is high, because we have a pull up resistor and a switch input whose other side is tied to ground, if it is open, here we have bit test file, skip if clear, but we're not clear because we're pulled up by that 10 kilo ohm resistor up to. 5 volts. So we continue, we go to this label right here, start underscore pause, and we continue in this loop until that switch is closed to ground. And then we see bit test file, skip if clear. The start switch input. When the start switch input goes low, we jump over. We skip if low. We skip if clear. Down to main. Now we are at the main program loop. We drop down here and we move file input data, which is initially set to zero, to the working register. And we move the working register to the file, port A. We go down here and we move the file digit address, which is initially set to zero, to the working register. And we move that working register to the file, port B. The same goes down here. We move the file, write address, which we initially set to zero to the working register, and we move the working register to the file port C. Now, down here, we want to select the input enable of the MC74HC154N. So, initially back up here we set it to a 1. Now we want to go low. So we move the literal value of hexadecimal 0 to the working register and we move the working register to the file port E, so we're low. We were high, now we're low. We call a delay. The delay is important so that we have a low, from high to low, a delay, low to high. Here we are going to set the input enable of the MC74HC154N from low to high. 
So we move the literal of hexadecimal 1 to the working register, and then we move the working register to the file port E. So we went from high to low to high. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Simply complicated. <laughs> and this is about the time I lose it. What we want to do, as we saw in the last videos, we want to increment the input data from 0 to 15 and then when we have cycled through 0 to 15 on the input data we increment the digit address from 0 to 7 and then when we increment the digit address from 0 to 7, we increment the write address from 0 to 15. Gosh, this is, this right here is the most complex piece of code to display all characters on that operator panel. I have some uh, notes here and I'll put those up at the end of the video. But let's drop down in here. Initially input data was zero and now it is one. When this value input data is equal to 16 we drop over here and we set that value to 0 and we move that value to input data so we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on all the way up to the value of 16. If we have not reached the value of 16 we go to repeat main that's down here and when we reach repeat main we have a long timer delay then we jump back up to main and we load those incremental values into port A. Now let's drop back down here. <laughs> this is going to get confusing but I'm sure you all can follow. If the input data has gone from 0 to 15 we bit test file skip if set and here when this value is equal to 16 hexadecimal we go down here we reset that value to 0 and move it to the input data. Then we drop down here and we go to the next digit address which is ink file digit address. And if we're not equal to hexadecimal 7 plus 1 then 
we go to repeat main, which is a delay, and we go back up to main. Now, the input data is set to zero, and the digit address is set to one. Let's come back down here. <laughs> Have we lost each other yet? <laughs> so, <laughs> we repeat. Let's get back up here. We repeat 0 through 16. We're at digit address 1. Okay. And we continue that process until digit address equals 8. That's a hexadecimal 7 plus 1. When we do reach hexadecimal plus 1, we jump over here, bit test file, skip if set, status, zero flag. Now we set the digit address to zero. And then we drop down here and increment the right address. In effect, going to the next ICM 7218C. <laughs> here we perform the same process until all of the ICM 7218Cs are selected. Great Lord, can we stop? <laughs> okay, so we loop here and then we drop down here and we loop here and then we drop down here and we loop here and in between we are sending those bits to port A, port B, and port C with port E going from high to low to high. Very complicated. Very complicated. <laughs> now, let's go down here and talk about the loops, the time delay loops. I'll show those, and for the sake of simplicity, um, as your homework assignment, I would like you to figure out how this works. Here's general purpose time delay that allowed us for the input enable to go from high, time delay, low, to high, and the long time delay subroutine that would allow those characters to be displayed on the operator panel at a comfortable rate. There you go. There you go. All right, folks. I know that uh, this was a very confusing piece of code. But look at it for a little bit, and you'll understand, based upon the previous videos for this operator panel, you'll understand why things go the way they go. Oh, one more thing. Down here you have the command end. That tells the compiler that we are finished. <laughs> so don't forget that right there. Folks, enjoy programming. 
and joy programming and interfacing your code to your hardware. <laughs> now, I got to say, this was a very difficult explanation, and I, I probably confused you all, but I'll try to put uh, my block diagrams and and uh, my flow charts up here in a little bit. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. Good night, all. We'll see you when the sun comes up. <laughs>